Hi, it's David from 3D Make It, and today we're going to be talking about Prusa Slicer 2. Let's go! Well, whether you're new to 3D printing or you've been around a while, there's one truth for all of us, and that's that we need to use a slicer. Slicers come in all shapes, forms, and varieties. We have Kira, Simplified 3D, Slick 3R, and now a new one has entered the scene, Prusa Slicer 2. We're going to be looking at Prusa Slicer 2 today to see what it can offer and see if it's truly the Simplified 3D killer that Joseph Prusa says it is. Let's take a look. So to start with, we need to download the slicer. It's easy to do. You head over to prusa3d.com slash prusa slicer and then just scroll down the page to where it says download and it will say drivers and apps you're just going to download them both so here's the 2.2.6 we just hit download and once it's finished downloading we run the installer so once you've got it installed and you open it it opens up to this screen um, if you don't want to remove profiles you have in any other slicer, uh, Slick 3R or the Prusa Slick 3R, just untick it here. We notice that he's rebranded it to just Prusa Slicer. Now, when we click the next button, we're going to see that all the Prusa machines are here and it's super simple for you to install them if you have a Prusa machine. You just pick the nozzle size and hit next. But for us, we don't have any Prusa machines or maybe you do. But we're going to click next and then we're going to click next because we don't have the Prusa SLA printer either. Uh, we can define a custom printer. So whatever printer you're using, I'm just going to do an Ender 3 as an example here. Uh, we can give it a name. We can click next. We tell it the firmware it's using. Now this is an important step because if you don't pick the right firmware here, you're going to be missing some options when you're trying to really get into the configuration. The bed shape is next. Uh, since it's a ender, it's 235 by 235. Now you'll notice, and some of you are probably screaming at the screen right now, hey, the Z height's not here. And I'll show you where to put that uh, in the next step here. So we click next, print diameters. So the nozzle is gonna be 0.4, and we have the filament 1.75 already set. We click next, and it can set our temperature limit. So um, since we have a heated bed, we're gonna set it at 60 for PLA. I choose 60 because it's quite cool where I print, so I like it to get hotter. And 200 for my filament for now is fine. When you hit next, it's just gonna ask to check for updates automatically and uh, install them if it finds it. So I'm gonna hit cancel because I already have some printers in here, but you would click finish and that will create your printer. All right, so now that you got your printer installed, you'll notice that you're greeted with a blank bill plate and you're also greeted with options. Now, by default, this is what you see, the simple options. So there's not a lot going on on the side here but you can turn on the advanced and this is where it starts to get fun. But I just want to show you a few of the settings here. So you have print settings, filament settings, and printer settings. So the first one we'll take a peek at is the printer settings and we made an Ender 3. So we could see that the Ender 3 has all of the information that we entered in in the wizard. So it has the 0.4 nozzle, um, but I've also added a few things. So you can see the color coded menus here are what you'll see when you toggle between simple advanced and expert. Anything in yellow is advanced and anything in red is expert. The layer limit heights is important to set because you can do adaptive slicing in Prusa Slicer 2. And if you set your limits properly here, so you can see my lower limit is 0.12, which is the lowest resolution I want to go on my Ender right now, and the highest is 0.32, both of those being magic numbers. Pretty much the rest of this is default from what you like for slicers before. I use retraction at 4.5 millimeters, and I also use 45 millimeters per second. I find that works best but you can set it to whatever you've learned and like the best. If you don't set your profile correctly for the firmware in the wizard, you will be missing the machine limits page. 
Now you can come back and change your firmware on the general screen here if you're missing it. So basically, we're going to come in here on the general screen and we're going to set our max print height to 250 for the Ender 3. Once we've done that, this page is fairly good to go. I've put my Octoprint information in there and I can print right from Slicer 2 to Octoprint. On the next screen we have custom G-code. Now this stuff is all generated in Kira and I just copied it over. It was really easy. So copy paste, copy paste, start and end G-code. Now let me show you how to get there. So we'll just open our Kira and we'll be patient while it opens. So once Kira opens, to get those start and end G-codes, all you need to do is select your printer from the list and hit Manage Printers. Then you're going to go to Machine Settings. In here, here's your start G-code, here's your end G-code. Now there is one gotcha. Uh, you have to be careful that in your G-code you don't reference anything in the curly brackets. Uh, Prusa Slicer doesn't like that, so if you have anything that's like curly bracket, machine width, M width, or something in here, you need to take that out. Um, once that's all settled and through, you can just close this window and we should be good to go. So now we've got it all copied in here. We can go to our machine limits and here's where we set our acceleration and jerk. So as we've been finding out recently, there's that uh, Creosa mod that's been kind of the buzz around the community. But basically, if you remember that an Ender 3 has 500 uh, millimeters per second for accelerations and five for jerk, you can put all those options in here. I'll also have a link to our 3D Make It website where you can find my package and download it there, which has all the printers uh, for the Ender 3 or Ender and CR10 10S profiles. The extruder was already set up in the wizard. We don't need to worry about that. So the print settings are done. The next set of settings we'll look at is the filament. Now filament is fairly straightforward. You can set a uh, density cost and then it will tell you how much it costs to print your print and it also get, lets you set your temperatures. You can get really advanced and tell it how to cool, keep the fan on always, start at a certain layer, wait for a certain speed. All of those settings are in here. Um, there's unloading and loading. Also, you can also set custom G-code for your filament which is kind of cool if you want to set different retraction settings and stuff. So the last settings we're going to talk about are the print settings. Now notice you can click the gear to get to the print settings or any settings along the side here or you can actually hit the print settings button along the top. So the print settings are fairly straightforward. Um, that's where you're going to set layer heights, perimeters, infill, skirts, and all of the other options we've seen in Kira or Simplified 3D. The interesting thing with Prusa Slicer 2 is when you add your machine by default, it gives you three perimeters, just like Creosum does. So it kind of takes some of the guesswork out of your configuration and you can come through and configure infill and all of your other settings along here. This is where you set the speed of your print and notice that you won't see speed unless you have those advanced settings ticked on. So what I would recommend is just always running Prusa 2 with expert mode. That way you see all the settings. So now that we're installed, let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's add a model. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can click the add button and then it'll open up to your file explorer and you can find a model. We're going to use Fat Cat. The other way you can actually bring a model into Prusa Slicer is just open the folder and then find your model, so Fat Cat. And then you can click and drag him in. So you can see here that I've actually loaded two fat cats on the side. So if I clicked and dragged, there's two fat cats. So let's just get rid of one for now. So I'll click that fat cat and then I just hit the delete button. Now, there's another button you can delete with along the top. So you can use the little minus 
button here to remove one model or if you want to clear your build plate you can use that one the other cool thing is you can copy your model right from the top so like if I hit copy and then I can paste and oh look there's my fat cat again and then I can paste again and I can paste again now this build plates getting kind of cluttered so there's an arrange build plate button and it will snap so that's this guy here and it just snaps all of the objects to the ta uh, build plate as well as it can and then you're ready to print them so I'm gonna clear my build plate again and then I'm just gonna add fat cat again this way so Fat Cat's an interesting model. I've been trying to print it for my wife for a while. It looks fairly simple and from the looks of it, it actually seems like I should be able to print it without infill, but that's not quite true. This model right in the top here presents a problem for my printers and probably everybody's where you need a bit of infill here. Well, like in Kira, you could use wonky support blockers and click all around the model and that's no fun now one cool thing about Prusa Slicer is you can add custom supports and custom modifiers to the model if you right click it you can add a modifier and then I'm gonna pick the cylinder so now I have a cylinder so I'm just gonna resize that quick so I click the cylinder along this side is all of our model tools so the set first one is moved the second one here is resized so I'm just gonna resize that so it's gonna be taller than my cat and now what I'll do is I'll hit the move button and I'll move my cylinder right into the model um, if you want to rotate or place the object flat if it's unsettled those buttons will do it you can even cut the plane so you could cut a flat bottom on a model if it was a little bit wavy so those options are all on the side here so basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna shape that uh, cylinder just a little bit more oblong and pull it to the side like that so now we can see that the cylinder is taking up that treble spot and now I'm gonna set my my infills so on fat cap I'm just gonna set it to zero I'm gonna click on my cylinder if I right click it I can click infill now we can see here that the cylinder has an infill value and now I can set 10% here and without having to worry about the whole model being infilled so it's much cleaner and quicker than Kira and it's much much easier than putting down those supports or wasting all that infill where we don't need it so keep in mind I have three perimeters so I'm gonna have a three wall object I should have infill right here so let's see what happens with that I'm just gonna hit slice now one thing you'll notice is the slicing is actually a lot quicker in Prusa Slicer 2 than it has been in any other version before so here's our model now we can look at the preview just like we do with the slider but we can see that there's only infill now where I put my modifier which is awesome now if you're running multicolor you can scroll to a layer and grab this little plus sign and you can see that it breaks into different colors but if we're not it's not a hard thing to change it you just scroll back down and hit the X where you were and you can scroll up or down on your model so we've learned about modifiers. Modifiers can also put custom supports. So instead of using that cylinder for using it to build my infill, I can use it to generate custom supports along the outside of a model if I need it. I'm just gonna flip back to my object view, which is down in the left-hand corner here. And then the layer view is just to the right of that icon. So in our model, there's one more thing I wanna show you. Now, Part of the problem with the cat model is the fact that when you're trying to slice it, the layers get a little too far apart when we come up top here. So to fix that, what we can do is take our slicer. Now I'm just going to drag my modifier over here so we can have a good understanding of what's going on. So I click my model, I click layer, and you can see that the model has changed grayish and then when you hover over it, you can see that there's a yellow line that follows the model up so see where it gets kind of like crazy on the top there if I click 
with my right mouse button or left mouse button, I can change the layer density. Now, I can reset it at the bottom of that window. So if I wanted to add layer height, so if I wasn't too worried about a sidewall, I could click the right mouse button and that would change the color to orange and red and be larger. But in this case, I need it to be more fine. So I'm gonna click my right mouse button and just drag that chart a little bit. So you can see now all the layers highlighted in the green color are gonna be uh, a smaller layer. Now remember when we were setting our printer up and we were setting the minimum layer heights and I mentioned that it was important, uh, it really is. So, so if you've come over to your print settings and go into the extruder, you can see, so the min layer, so when I'm using that infill and I set it all the way green like I have here, it would be 0.12. If I went all the way over, it would be 0.32. Now it gets a little messy because you're going to tread outside of your magic numbers. But you're going to get a better print quality and faster because you can say, hey, just make this top part like the maximum resolution which will slow that part down, but the other parts will still print faster. So I'm just going to move my little block back in and we can hit slice again. And then notice, even though we were playing around with all those settings, I still had infill. I still had my fat cap model. And so in a few seconds, it'll re regenerate my model. And we can see that it's back to normal with the infill in the middle. At the bottom right, you can see that I have an estimated cost of, and an estimated weight and filament use. So we have a cost of 65 cents to print my fat cat, and we have an estimate of time of two hours and 43 minutes. So we have a really quick rundown of how Prusa Slicer 2 works. Personally, I think it's amazing. It works faster than Kira in most cases. I can do more with it. I can save filament now. I can put infill where I want. I can put supports exactly where I need them. I don't have to worry about clicking a million little boxes. I can add all of the same post processing and custom G code scripts in as I could in Kira. Now, is it for everybody? It's a little tricky, but once you get into it, I think you'll find that you really, really like it. I think it's a great option. I think that if you've used Creosa Mod recently and you've even gone up to Kira 4.1, you'll be pleasantly surprised with how fast this interface runs and how easy it is to use. Well, there you have it. I hope we all learned a little bit more about Prusa Slicer 2 today. I hope that you all take a chance to use this awesome slicer and I hope you've learned a little bit along the way. If you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when there's more videos coming up. You guys are great. Have a good one.